how much more time do you have on this earth to establish your family, to build your business, your nonprofit? How much more time do you have? For Be Feeling Like Friday, I want to talk to you about a relationship that is one of the most important relationships you can ever have in your life. And so if you've been led to this video, it is important that you stay connected and hear what is being said. I know that the world is up and down, talk of inflation, talk of recession. And if you've been on my YouTube channel for quite a bit, you know how I feel about those things. When C19 was rampant in 2020, you saw my videos and I was expressing exactly how I felt about it. And it remains the same. Nothing is going to touch my house. Nothing will ever touch my family because that is what I've always believed. Because I believe in the power of God, I believe in what the Word says. I believe that I'm given power and authority, and you should too. So yes, we're going to talk to you through some scriptures. Yes, we're going to look. But I want to be practical. Because when life happens, you need practical things. You need examples. You need ways in which you can relate. I do invite you to watch my series of testimonies about one of the first encounters that I've had with God and how it completely changed my life and how it is today. I encourage you to watch that video, but I also just encourage you to be open to listen, open to watch and hear what is going to be said today. So currently recording is 2023 and there are rumors of war, there are talk of inflation, recession. There's a lot of talk about the economy going down and there be the failing of certain things. Does it apply to you? Will it apply to you? Because if you've been with me, you realize that our words have power. We watch the videos from before. If you have been misusing your words, blindly walking to areas, passively using your words to just agree with things you shouldn't be agreeing with, why would you choose to walk blindly when you can have a full-blown map of what your life should be like? When you can have the key points and areas and revelation about what exactly you're designed to do, why would you continue to not know what your purpose is when you can have access to an understanding of your purpose? So all of this is in reference to Yahweh, the Most High God, the creator of all things, the creator of you, who has established things that he wants to birth out of you. But if you don't know what those things are, you are not wanting to pursue a connection with him, you'll find you'll continue to walk blind. And the things of the world will continue to work out like the things of the world does. But if you get in connection with Yahweh, the one true creator of all things, you don't have to worry about anything. You don't know how to worry about what is that look going to look like for my family. Your only concern will be how will I manage all that's coming in? How can I give more to others from this overflow? So choose not to walk blindly because you can see and you can have true freedom when you connect with the Most High God. I do want to share some scriptures with you and you can take your time to jot them down to decide on what they mean to you. John 14, 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If when the time comes and I'm asked about the different religions, about the different things, these are the things I'm gonna say. My connection with God, Yahweh, is not about religion at all. It's about relationship. And I know that through my relationship with him, I grow to understand him. I grow to understand who I am and who I've been designed to be. I grow to understand how I'm meant to serve others and how I'm meant to live out this life. I also understand that as the scripture says, there is only one way to God and that is through Jesus Christ, which means accepting Jesus Christ and believing in him for your salvation. And so if you've considered, well, there's this other thing that says otherwise. Well, there's this other thing that says this way. And if I can just test this out, maybe I can also have what they have, the things of the world. But if you connect with the true divine maker, Yahweh, and you make that decision, you will be walking 
divinely in your assignment in alignment with what he has for you he has designed you so he knows exactly where you should be going should be now what season you're in and so why walk blindly there's only one way to god and that is through jesus christ let's look at another scripture john 3 3 through 6 jesus answered him truly truly i say to you unless one is born again he cannot see the kingdom of god Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God, which is born of the flesh, is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Jesus constantly talked throughout the Bible in the time of his ministry, which is three years. You can see God talking and Jesus talking because there's a trinity there's God the Father Jesus the Son and the Holy Spirit and so we can have in here to hear all of them because they are all connected without competition and one is trumping over the other they're all three in trinity so when you see Jesus saying truly truly that means I'm telling you this is the truth I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. We are born naturally. We're born from our mothers. And there is a spiritual birthing. There is a spiritual birth that happens when you accept Jesus into your heart. When you say, God, I'm going to serve you. There is something that changes for your life. And of course, in staying in that direction, staying committed to God, you will find that you will see fruit. Doesn't mean we're not going to be attacked. I can talk about a variety of attacks that I've experienced. I'm not going to give glory to the enemy, but here I am. Despite it all, I am always going to prevail because I am backed by the Most High God Yahweh. And I don't have to worry about the things of the world and what this person who's on the other side is going to try to do to me because I'm protected. I'm protected under the blood of Jesus Christ. So being born again means you are going to accept God. You're going to stand committed. I'm going to pursue a relationship with you. And I'm going to accept you into my heart. I'm going to commit. I'm going to be your daughter, your son. So he's talking to Nicodemus in John 3. And Nicodemus is basically saying, what do you mean being born again? I've already been born. Am I to be born a second time? How is that going to happen? And Jesus once again said, I'm telling you the truth, unless you've been born of water and spirit. So we talked about a spiritual rebirth and also saying by the water. Water in this case is referring to by baptism. So being baptized but also saying that I am going to accept God into my heart. Because God has designed every single person, but there's free will. So he's not going to intrude and force himself on you and say, well, you need to accept me. It is a choice. So you have to choose to say that God is going to be my Lord and Savior, my father. If it's more intimate, my daddy, I am going to follow him and I'm going to do what he's asking and assigning me to do so goes on that which is born in the flesh is flesh and that which is born in the spirit is spirit so knowing the distinction between the two what is the flesh the flesh is your desires that may not always be good so you may desire to have things that you shouldn't have the flesh will have you getting out of character sometimes and it may also have you saying things that you shouldn't say or just wanting to go with things that are immorally wrong but we just have the desire we want to do it so we do it so that's fleshly but if we are connected to god and the holy spirit the holy spirit will say well don't say that don't type that email drop it don't go there don't hire that person etc always the holy spirit talking to you and saying what to do, not, not to do, even giving insight. I've had a variety of cases of getting insight from the Holy Spirit. Truly is a blessing to be connected to the Holy Spirit and have the ability to hear from God, to hear what is being said in those moments, those early mornings, middle of the day, 
times when that revelation is needed. So you want to make sure that you're connected to the Holy Spirit as well. Next, Romans 10 and 10. For with the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. So we see the steps here. We believe in our hearts and confess with our mouth, which results in salvation. So we put an equation together. Believing plus confessing equals salvation. So we're confessing that we are, we believe in Jesus Christ. Confessing that we believe in God, which results in salvation. 1 Thessalonians 5, 9-10 For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with Him. So, the Bible has quite a bit of metaphors. Jesus talked in parables to the crowd, and then for His disciples, He was clear and provided more details. And so when you read the Bible, you'll find that it needs to be examined with the headspace that is different than reading things plainly and taking it for face value. Now, there are a variety of things in the Bible that can be taken for face value, but there's some things that are deeper revelation in it that is not directly what you think it is. It may be something that's based on context of so reading the scriptures with before and around it or reading something that has a connection with the other scripture and so we want to make sure we get the right revelation so Jesus died on the cross for us and it was for our sins and so when we accept him into our hearts we are saying that we are in agreement that Jesus died for us and that he did it for our salvation and that we are also in agreement that we are healed because of that. That we are healed as in past tense, as it already happened. Although we may be in a current state of something, someone may be in a current state of something going on with their body or something, their body is reacting in a certain way or their mind is being targeted and attacked by the enemy. We know that we can continue to claim healing I am healed, I am forgiven, I am blessed, and it's in that moment. Although it may not be in that moment, it is going to manifest, it is going to result in what we're believing for, and so we just have to continue with our faith. Romans 6, 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So. If one continues on the path of sin without accepting God into their heart, they will find them in a place that no one should want to go to. No one should want to suffer after they leave this earth. No one. No one wants to willingly suffer. If you had something going on with your body, let's say, and I'm not putting this on you, Let's, I'm gonna give myself as an example. I used to have a lot of heartburn, so eating spicy foods and then laying down. The solution was not eating spicy food at night, not laying on a certain side because when you lay on a certain side, the contents from your stomach are going to go into your esophagus and that's heartburn. I knew the solution and so I stopped the habits, stopped the action of eating late, and it was resolved. If you know the solution, why would you continue to walk in a place of darkness, a place of black, a place of being burdened and oppressed because you don't want to agree with the solution, because you don't want to accept the solution? Why would any of us do that? So, what you may be going through today, I present you to you the solution. The solution is Jesus Christ. Not meaning that you're not going to go through things. That after you accept Jesus Christ, that okay, life is going to be a breeze. And I get whatever I want. Let me call God, aka prayer, and let me tell him what I want in this moment, when I want it, what the details are. That's not the reality. You're going to have to fight for your faith. You're going to have to fight for your salvation. You're going to have to fight for the things that are destined for you that the enemy is going to try to capture. You're gonna have to fight for those things. But you can fight and win because you're winning with Yahweh because you're backed by Him. 
you're backed by the Trinity, and that carries weight. John 1, 12 through 13, but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born, not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Of God, ye were born, reborn, because you accepted God into your heart. And last scripture, and an invitation, Romans 10, 9 through 10. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. So you went through this whole video to this invitation that I hand to you to accept Yahweh, God, into your heart. This moment is dependent on your acceptance. If you want to walk in a lifestyle that is not blinded by the things of the world, if you want to say, I am going to commit to God, I'm going to follow God, I'm going to be receptive to what God wants to do in my life, I'm going to walk on the divine pathway that God has for me and has designed for me, the one true creator. And I want to share that it's going to be challenges that come up, but by making a simple statement, you can have salvation and you can walk in a new life, a free life, a free life that you've yet to experience before. So I invite you to say this statement with me. I accept Jesus Christ into my heart. I know that he died on the cross for my sins and I accept this day his purpose for my life and I choose to walk in his divine pathway for me and I will commit to him today. You will say this to God and you will receive salvation and it's not that it's going to be this supernatural feeling and you're gonna shed your skin and you're gonna be this new person but in your heart you are a new person because you've decided to accept that God has designed you and that he has a purpose for you and that you're gonna walk in the purpose that he has for you so in this new life on this pathway you're going to have challenges and I want to be honest about them you're going to face challenges, the enemy is going to try to attack you, attack your mind, to distract you, to make it so that you do not want to connect with others on this pathway, that you don't want to go to church, that you don't want to do certain things. But stay the course. Connect with a leader who is speaking from God. Do not be deceived. Ask for discernment. I think one of the best things you can do with your new life being reborn is to ask for discernment. Is this the person I'm supposed to be listening to? When I go into on social media, on YouTube, guide me to the people who I'm supposed to listen to in this season. Guide me to the people who you designed to speak to me, where I can be receptive and my heart can be receptive. You need someone to shepherd you, whether it be a pastor, a group that God said you need to join months ago, go back and reach out to that group and join the group. The point is to have someone who is hearing from God that can teach you about the Bible, teaching you about your new walk in life, teaching you about how you should be leading your life now and being open to what they share with you. So maybe a church, maybe a group, but just make sure they're connected to God. Make sure God has said you need to connect with them. And if you hear any meowing, that is my cat. You want to make sure that it is God who's telling you and drawing you to this person and not yourself. Because the enemy will also have things that are being drawn to you on YouTube and TikTok and wherever else. But ask God and pray. So praying will be really important in your new lifestyle now. You want to pray and ask God for things. Ask for revelation and discernment. This is your assignment after you've made this acceptance. I would also add for those who have fallen away who said I'm not going to do the religion thing, I'm not going to get under the things that are wrong in the church, I want you to think about the right things that are right with God in your relationship with Him. Don't let those who hurt you and people who were imperfect that hurt you get in the way of your relationship with God. Take out the religion and replace it with relationship. I am going to talk to God. I am going to pursue Him. I'm going to get the revelation from Him on what I'm to do, what I'm supposed to do. I am going to make sure that I am keen to hear Him. I'm going to ask for discernment. I'm going to ask for revelation. I'm going to make sure that my relationship with God is not tainted because of what happened with the experience with so-and-so. Forgive and let go. Forgive and let go. 
and make sure that your relationship with God is fully as it should be and that there be no mistake when you leave this earth that you are indeed going to be with him. So I encourage you to stay connected, subscribe to the channel. I also encourage you to subscribe to my podcast. If I'm not on YouTube, you'll find me on my podcast sharing of, about a variety of topics that you can subscribe to and I encourage you to stay connected and stay on the path of righteousness. There are going to be large, wide paths that have the ability for you to go down, but I want you to stay on the narrow path. The narrow path takes you in your divine calling. It takes you into your divine assignment, where you are supposed to be in your life right now. If you go on the paths that are wide paths, the ones that are not narrow, you're going to find the different destructions coming up. Think of it as a road that has many ways to go and there's different signs. The sign for God should be very clear and you should stay on that pathway. So thanks for joining me for Full Life Friday. I'm Kia Harris-Tocklin and I trust that you're blessed by this message. Take care.